Welcome back to the show, everyone. So, PlayStation have given us a stark reminder of just how dangerous digital libraries are for your ownership, because things are straight up being deleted. Ark Survival Ascended runs like ass. It is um, indeed what their lead designer has said. Some refreshing, uh, I suppose, honesty there. Elsewhere, Embracer continues to be causing havoc because they would rather cut freshly acquired teams to the bone obviously to get that juicy marrow, than let their developers actually make new games. Rockstar, though, do make new games. GTA 6, looking pretty damn good. Another game we've all been waiting for is Dragon Age Dreadwolf. And we're still going to be waiting, in spite of a new reveal from Bioware, and more wild stuff's going on, because Suicide Squad's latest playtests are actually turning out to be really fun, which will probably make the WB Games live servicecation sting all the more. And of course, it's the end of Cyberpunk 2077 development. It's going out with a bang, bang. And here's today's sponsor. If you want to support our show, hang out with us in the Members Lounge Discord to get exclusive content like our five-day-a-week publication loading screen. Then check out bellular.ghost.io today down below. And found out there's a seven-day trial button, so I clicked that, and uh, there you go. All right. Check it out. With that said, all right, gang, first, I've got three quick but spicy stories. This first one, gotta say, really pissed me off. Here's the deal. Embracer Group, what do they do? They gobbled up all the little publishers. They gobbled up all the developers. Then they lost their big bag of money and have had to, in some cases, instead of divest companies, just shut them down. Just cut their staff. So they have basically actually ended up engaging in massive corporate banditry to the great detriment of the uh, games industry. So thanks, Embracer. This time, ever heard of the Insurgency Games? Uh, really fun mill sims. Um, well, I don't want to say mill sims, but uh, definitely more of the sort of hardcore tactical shooter, you know, very low uh, time to kill, uh, quite visceral gameplay. So uh, yes, uh, it's a Focus Interactive published, um, you know, game, the Insurgency series. They've been really successful with those games. But now, Saber have reported layoffs as a result of the Embracer group restructuring. And uh, Nick writing, of course, at Second Wind, which is basically the gang from The Escapist uh, escaping which is kind of funny. Uh, so his sources have suggested that an upcoming project has been cancelled and most of the development team has been laid off because, once again, uh, Embracer Group are just saying, nope, new games, risk, things that won't immediately give us money, bye. Even though with the Insurgency games, you have a goddamn proven team who can make good content. And you know what's funny? And you know what? person doesn't even work at the goddamn company anymore. I don't care. <sighs> A subsidiary of the Embracer Group was uh, basically scouting around and have been in our office, right? And I was very suspicious of this entire thing. But, you know, you take the meeting to see what's going on. And the quote that was said to me, and by the way, the subgroup person, dead on. Very cool. Uh, this is just the thing of their management has put them in a situation where people are going to fail. And anyone involved in this situation literally doesn't even work at the company anymore anyway. So I don't really care. They basically said, oh, you know, look, what we care about, it's not actually, you know, maybe your last game didn't have, uh, and this was before Pill Beyond launched. So, you know, it's ages ago. Um, they were saying, you know, we, we don't even mind if the last game you did wasn't. No, no, we are investing in good teams for the long term. How the tables turned in six months. The amount of damage this is doing to the industry is massive, and uh, so much of it is in projects that will never see the light of day, meaning, unfortunately, we won't be able to fully appreciate how much we have lost from this irresponsible corporate banditry. Our next story, Dragon Age Dreadwolf. If you remember the recent Bungie story I talked about, the idea of, you know, just firing a whole bunch of pretty, or, you know, laying off a bunch of tenured, you know, more expensive staff because they've been there for a long time. Do you remember that Bioware did that with 50 people on their team, including 50 people who've been working like, you know, early days, like Dragon Age Origins? Mass Effect 1, probably Jade Empire and before. So, you know, the vibes haven't been great with Bioware, 
which pains me to say as a fan of Mass Effect. But we can expect our first actual look at Dragon Age Dreadwolf next summer, though our release date is far, far on the horizon, which does mean that um, you'll have to wait until we actually get an official glimpse. We did get an unofficial glimpse in a gameplay leak, but by the time we actually get official stuff, that gameplay leak will basically be ancient history. But what's worth noting here is that EA have set the store pages for the game live on every platform, including Steam, and that does suggest, much like with, uh, say, Dead Space, um, EA have decided that, um, you know, at least for some of their single-player games, they are happy to do that off their own platform. So, Dragon Age on Steam, that trend is continuing. Next, then! This is going to be so funny because the only thing that would make the Suicide Squad kill the Justice League situation better is if the actual game that Rocksteady made was amazing. Because then we would have the beautiful contrast of amazing game made by amazing game developer Rocksteady contrasted with live service bullshit that Warner Bros. Games have forced into it. Of course, recently, we did talk about Warner Brothers Games and their lovely push for more live services because, hey, why do Hogwarts uh, Legacy 2 when, you know, you can have Hog Hogwarts forever, Hogwarts Infin Infinity? Uh, so, over 30 minutes of Suicide Squad footage is leaked despite players being asked to sign non-disclosure agreements. Um, now, that may have been expected, but actually what maybe some didn't expect, people's reactions are really positive. The movement, the shooting, the character writing and all is drawing praise from audiences. People are actually talking about pre-ordering this game following the hands-on gameplay in their beta test. And this is despite not that much being different from the original showcase that drew such a negative response from people in February of this year. Now, as for that showcase, look, a lot of the character movements looked great. And I think some of us were like, oh, okay, yeah, guns, stats, bracers that give me more data. But the actual core gameplay did look pretty damn slick for what it was. The funny thing here is it's probably going to be a real good game that plays well, feels good, is a rock steady game. But that's not why people look disappointed. People look disappointed and suspicious because it very much looked live service. So that's uh, basically that situation. Little bit of a little bit of an oof, but perhaps it could be a game that'll have a really good campaign that you could perhaps get the game, you know, get the game at in a year or two, bargain bin price, play a really good slice of Rocksteady content, and then move on with your life and not have to deal with the live service. Now, let's get on to our main stories. Nice reminder from PlayStation, you don't own anything. So licensing does mean you don't actually own things unless it is a physical copy that uh, the licensors will have to go and, you know, pry from your cold, dead hands. So even the likes of Steam, you simply have a license to access media in the form of games, movies, music, anything like that. At the very least, we do know Valve has a kill all of our DRM kill switch. So, um, you know, push comes to shove, Gabe, we hope you we hope you press the button. But as spotted by PC Gamer with Warhammer Quest, a licensed uh, Warhammer uh, game, it's been delisted uh, on Steam by uh, the publisher Chilled Mouse. Though oddly, it wasn't delisted on Good Old Games. Now here's the deal: if you buy it beforehand, or you know you had it beforehand, and you know you download it, it's it's yours, right? As long as you don't delete it. Okay, and now it's joining a list of nearly 2,000 games that have been catalogued as being delisted in modern times, all unavailable in a legal manner for new audiences. It's sad but ordinary. And this is where get things get a bit different because what's odd about today's story is it's not ordinary. It wouldn't be newsworthy if it was just a license expired, you can't download a thing from a store anymore, but you know, if you already own it, download it and you know, it's yours or whatever. No, 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 it's not that. So this is, uh, in 2021, Sony announced that they would no longer be selling television or movies directly to audiences via the PlayStation Store. They claimed that the audience were just switching, of course, over to subscription models, right? And that, of course, you can just get Crunchyroll, Netflix, Prime, Apple TV on your PS5. However, they said users would retain existing licenses that they had purchased. Now, the way those licenses work is that there's three parties. You're one of them. The other one is the distributor, of course, the seller, which would be Sony, and then the license holder, which in this case would be Warner Brothers Discovery. Now, usually what happens if the license holder or seller end up backing out of a deal is it's like the Warhammer Quest situation. You know, you are basically going to be fine. They can't go and remove the thing from you. But that's where things have got weird. DRM 
is going to delete the licenses from your library. As of 31st of December, because of licensing BS, you'll no longer be able to watch any of your previously dis uh, purchased Discovery content, and the content will be removed from your video library. So I don't know if you're the person who say bought every single episode of Ghost Adventures uh, <laughs> just a la carte and had them on your PlayStation account, you're in trouble. Uh, yeah, this is pretty rough. This is a massive uh, number of TV shows. And I mean, actually, I, I said um, I said Ghost Adventures as a joke. No, it's other things such as Cake Boss. I, I was going to say Deadliest Catch. I remember watching that as a kid. I was like, is this just gruff people in Alaska with crabs? Hell yeah. But anyway, a lot of those, you know, Mythbusters, Naked and Afraid, gone even though you've purchased them. So this is literally a case just of, hey, your purchase has been uh, deleted. Now look, big picture for most of these shows, who, get, who, who really gives a damn? But I think it's just the principle here because we're used to something being de delisted, but you still, uh, as a license holder, being able to access it. This is different from the norm and absolutely not something we want to see continue. Now, to move away from this, we do have Ark Survival Ascended, uh, and that it runs like ass. And that's not me being some sort of toxic YouTube pundit. It is um, indeed what their lead designer has said. Yeah, uh, the, the developers themselves have said, well, I'll just do the quote. Uh, Firstly, I want to say servers are ass. They run like ass, and their stability is ass. We need to improve it. It's going to be improved uh, immediately, which is kind of refreshing. Like, hey, you know, it walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. All the players know what it is and the developers are just for some reason not allowed to acknowledge reality developers acknowledging reality always feels good now the bit that's fascinating to me is that survival ascended had loads of drama right there was a lot of skepticism from audiences yet and this was picked up by ign they uh, reported 600,000 sales on steam alone and that i believe was uh, i think there was a two-week delay from the steam launch to the console launch so yeah it seems that those servers are uh, yes they are ass but that's something that's really being revealed by how hard the servers are actually being slammed. Now, a bit of a glimmer in this story is that it actually could have been quite a lot more messy. To explain that, we need to go back to August, right? Now, in August, uh, Nitrado, they were confirmed as the exclusive server partner for Studio Wildcard and Snail Games. And that would mean that the official servers could only be hosted on their network with a view to integrating uh, significant improvements by having mods be manageable on the server level and that kind of thing. But that meant that community-hosted servers on any provider other than their, uh, well, th they just, you know, they, they couldn't be used. Privately hosted servers could still happen, but there were limitations with Steam DRM, meaning you were actually unable to run a server and the game from the same Steam account. Obviously, very dedicated communities and modders were not at all pleased about this, which um, is actually why, after their feedback, on October 27th, uh, Studio Wildcard actually relented there, and uh, they, they basically did the removal of the Steam DRM requirement for the servers, meaning that people can at least host their own servers to get around the official one ones being ass. Next then, Rockstar are refusing to follow an industry trend because Grand Theft Auto 6 ain't coming out on PC initially. Been a bit of a chaotic time for, of course, GTA people. Basically, an enterprising crypto bro decided to leak the trailer uh, a little bit early, and essentially Rockstar just said, yep, it's leaked, we'll just publish the thing. It got 50 million views under 12 hours, did really well. Uh, not as well as, I believe, some BTS music video, but anyway. Look, if you want my impressions, I think that was a goddamn pitch perfect amazing trailer um i have seen so much pearl clutching at the content in the trailer obviously people not understanding like so many of those scenes like you know the car twerk and the hammer lady and everything th those are literal viral moments that have came out of america in you know gta just in case you've forgotten a game taking the piss out of america made by scottish people that's what gta is a lot of people don't seem to get that <sighs> Of course, not everybody's Scottish. Obviously, it's just, you know, Rockstar, Scottish company. Um, I mean, obviously, there are so many more places now. Now, what the rest of the industry is chatting about is the release date. And it's also interesting because Rockstar themselves do seem to be a company... Now, I do believe that Rockstar are still 
basically very aggressive when it comes to security and stuff like that. There was a recent drama that happened there about a very long tenured, I believe actually, what was it, co-founding person? Uh, anyway, it goes way back, uh, talking about the development process of an earlier game and basically Rockstar were like, excuse me, take that down. Quite interesting. But apparently their work culture, you know, crunch and that kind of stuff, way better than it was in the past. It actually seems they genuinely did invest in that. And of course they, you know, did have all the money in the world to do so. But uh, basically, GTA 2025, and we also know probably before April 2025 is the current plan, and we know that because of a very suspicious, um, you know, total expected net bookings um, that uh, Take-Two Interactive, their parent company, are expecting in, you know, that fiscal year. Sort of gives away the goose, doesn't it, chaps? Anyway, so there's another caveat, though, because this is only the Xbox and PlayStation release date. There is no PC being talked about, and that does mean, once again, if you're a PC player, you'll have to pick it up on console and maybe then pick it up again on PC. Now, in a way, you could see this as double dip, time to get the pitchforks out again. However, this is just a continuation of Rockstar, uh, really what they've always done. They've done it for every Grand Theft Auto. They did it for Red Dead Redemption 2. And the thing is here, you could actually, you know, there, there can be reasons for this. As an example, when GTA 5 uh, released on PC, it was a damn good job. And while there were bugs in Red Dead Redemption 2, and there was quite a lot of dramas around there, and we all remember the Rockstar Games launcher, and we all remember the other things they've done that have been sus, like the remaster games, whatever. Um, they have, broadly speaking, actually done games that like let PCs flex. They do give a pretty good uh, sort of performance there. And we can contrast this. Imagine if Cyberpunk 2077 said PC only, no consoles until it's ready. Now, yes, if you're if you have to release on one platform, you know, PC or console, console's easier because you're targeting one system that everybody has in a standardized. Yes, that's true. But uh, if Cyberpunk had have been PC only, man, maybe they would have got less pre-orders, maybe, whatever. But there's definitely a chance that game wouldn't have been as much of a shit show and that they would not uh, have had to have spent so much money addressing technical debt. Again, boneheaded management, we all know. We all know that story by now. But anyway, that is the situation there. GTA, PC, maybe we're looking at 2026. Just could be the way that it is. I, for one, am actually quite excited. I really like the Bonnie and Clyde uh, vibe that they're going for. I thought, like, look, that last, that end frame, you know, the two of them busting into the shop in the trailer as a video editor, the craft of that trailer was absolutely perfect. They nailed it. Our final story then is actually good news for Cyberpunk 2077 because they are done. And there has been a lot of discourse amongst developers, um, basically surrounding like as much as this game has so many problems, when you look at what Red Engine has been able to achieve with 2.0, Phantom Liberty, and 4090, it is genuinely quite stunning. A lot of people are just kind of thinking, damn, really? You're, just, you're going to go to Unreal 5? It does seem that that could work. Who knows? That's been a bit of a discourse, but that's kind of a story for later. They're going out with a bang. The final update for the game is happening as development on 2077 is wrapping up. Basically, and this is, of course, on top of Phantom Liberty and 2.0, turns out they weren't quite done because they confirmed to IGN that they got one more patch they want to deliver on. Content that they had been working on but could not quite fit into Phantom Liberty, but that this would represent the final major patch of of this game. See, there's one thing that featured in the first trailer, kind of represented a core thematic element of the game, also was heavily featured in Edge Runners, and that is the Metro system, because they are now going to be implementing the Metro system that you can use either for fast travel or just ride for the vibes. And as somebody who from time to time does like to boot up Star Citizen and just go from one terminal to another terminal in a little space train, it's kind of cool whenever video games are just emulating those real life things. But they're also adding other things. You have post-romance quest hangouts that mean that your chosen partner doesn't just vanish from the game when you finish their mission line, something that's always quite painful for the heartstrings and you're deeply invested in a story in a game and likely one of the reasons why people 
love Baldur's Gate 3 because it is so good at continuing to recognize the choices that you've made. Radio access when you're on foot via cyberware, replayable car races, as well as updates to racing, chasing, and driving AI, new world consequences for gang interactions where they'll chase or attack the player, new open world interactables with bars, vendors, and potential for car chases and missions, redesigned boss fights, an entire new highway that crosses the map, new bikes, bike physics to allow for tricks, new bike combat options, and a host of visual audio and quality of life features. Um, so yeah, really a surprising amount of pretty significant gameplay impacting content that overall will allow this to be more of a well-rounded experience. Perhaps not quite what people initially would have maybe conjured up in their mind based on that very initial trailer that did give us the Metro, but uh, certainly a pretty damn good effort. Now, CD Projekt Red have recently confirmed that nearly half of their total development headcount are working on The Witcher 4, while they do have a team working on the Cyberpunk sequel that is codenamed Orion, and they are currently gearing up for development of that game in Unreal Engine 5. And as such, the long and story development of 2077 is coming to an end. But that's no bad thing, because we're having these very good final systemic updates for the community, and with the existence of modding tools, well, the fan base has got what they want to keep the game going for a while. And by the way, I haven't got a chance to talk about it yet, but man, those Witcher 3 mod tool plans they've got. Oh, it's a pity that Cyberpunk was such a rocky time because goddamn can CD Projekt Red do it right when they are not making stupid mistakes, eh? That's it for today's video. I hope you found it to be interesting. You can check out this one next that I've uh, curated for you based on this video. And with that, I'll see you over there.